Welcome to the Pest Now Education Lab. Today we're going to take a look at why some rodent problems are particularly hard to solve when they really shouldn't be. Uh, I've got some honored guests with us today. While their bodies may look a little funny in this animated uh, educational film, uh, you'll find all of them to have great experience and knowledge that you'll get from. The problem we have is all of our technicians and inspectors have uh, had ample training in rodent control but sometimes we'll need to touch up on it and we'll get particular jobs that are extremely hard to handle or to solve on the rodent side when they really shouldn't be. Uh, and there's a lot of issues that when you question these professors that I'm going to introduce to you in a minute, uh, you'll find out what their main issues are, what really drives them crazy and what actually promotes a lot of bad reviews. Remember, all of my training is open to the public so the homeowners can see this as well. So if they're having a problem with uh, rodent control and uh, they find something in this film that you're not doing as a technician, rest assured that you're probably gonna be called to uh, the front and try to explain it. Well, without further ado, let's get started with introducing our professors today. Ramon Rosa, professor, over 20 years experience, reigning from New York City, weighing in at 600, no, I'm kidding. Uh, Ramon has extensive experience in commercial and residential, over 20 years in the business, 24 years actually, and he'll be working the Maryland side and commercial. He's a district manager in the Maryland area and handles the DC area as well as Baltimore. So he's pretty experienced with rodents as we all know that those areas tend to have a lot of rodent activity as all uh, you know, cities will. Then we have Bobby Badmouth Johnson, been in the business for over 20 years, specializes in uh, just about everything. He's a construction uh, expert. He's also expert at uh, inspections and handles most of the area of Maryland and upper part of DC. Over 20 years experience. And while he looks a little grumpy, he's pretty good with uh, solving problems. Then we have Professor K. Dog Longerbean, who works the Northern Virginia area, Alexandria, and a lot of the areas that have a lot of rodent activity, like rodent, I mean, rodent areas such as Arlington, Alexandria, and um, even some of the rural areas that are experiencing rodent problems. Over 24 years experience, you won't find any better at solving problems. And then we have Mr. Chad Edwards, Chad the Hitman Edwards. I call him the Hitman because he solves almost every problem he's been on. 20 years experience as a technician, promoted to uh, uh, to run the commercial division for Northern Virginia and the, uh, the areas of the metro within the DC limit area. And uh, he's grown the business tremendously and he's done it by good quality control. Uh, Chad Everts lands on your property and you have a problem, he's gonna solve it. But he also helps us work on these training videos as far as uh, finding out why we can't solve certain problems and it's always it's never the uh, chemical or the, or the bait we're using it's uh, some of the other things that really drive us crazy and that's what this training is going to be all about let's take a look at why some of these problems that are hard to solve that there really shouldn't be and i'm going to let uh, professor k dog lead this one with the help of professor ramon and as service managers they they have to take a look at the areas where they're getting complaints, getting bad reviews, and their answer was kind of uh, kind of surprised me, but actually it shouldn't. I've got over 30 years of business in the business, and uh, pretty much know it all starts at the point of uh, the sale where the uh, where it's transacted. So why are some rodent jobs harder to solve than others? And a lot of times it can be blamed on that evil demon phones. What happens is the phones are great. At Pest Now we're allowed to take rodent calls that people are having rodent issues and we can actually sell a treatment over the phone which actually it's really good because the customer gets great immediate service and we're able to dispatch and deploy units down there to, to attempt to solve the problem. The problem is when they're on the phone we just don't get enough information from the inspectors and we don't have call center people doing this. These are actual experienced inspectors taking the call, analyzing as best they can and promoting or setting up a treatment program. So here's what's funny about it. Sometimes on these, uh, Professor K-Dog will tell you, we don't even know because it was taken over the phone because the inspector didn't write down well they're dealing with mice or rats. Well, well it matters because that sets up a different treatment program. Are we dealing with a condo, single family home, apartment? Is it a commercial job? It matters. Most of the time we get that information, but you would be surprised that sometimes we don't. It should stand the reason that a single family home, most of the time is gonna be a lot easier 
a problem to solve concerning rodents than an apartment or a commercial building or even a condo. It matters. Location of the service. Are we dealing in a rural, urban, or we are within the city? I mean, think about it. If we have a unit that's having rodent problems in the heart of D.C., and we have another one that's got rodent problems, let's say, in some small town in Virginia, well, it's going to be a difference. The location, it's it, it affects it, the environment that the rodents actually operate in, and the the pest pressure, the rodent pressure. It all matters, and it's sometimes we don't get that information, and it, and, and it becomes a hindrance in solving the problem. Has a service account ever been serviced before? This sounds crazy, but you might, we might receive a call to go out and service a, a particular unit or a house, and find out that the, we were there just two years ago. Well, eventually we'll catch it, but wouldn't it be nice for that technician to know before he goes out? I realize he has the history on his tablet, but it'd be nice to know and find out why we didn't initially solve it. Is another company actually, or are we actually servicing it? Sometimes the call center will put forth what we call uh, investigative leads from what is supposed to be new customers, and we'll find out when we get the actual uh, the call center, not the call center transfer, is it, it, it's like, like it's a new customer, but it's not. It's actually an existing customer. Then it should go directly to service. But the inspectors have it, and it gets kind of tangled up. doesn't make it look real well. And it matters because we want to know if we are servicing it, of course. Are they currently under treatment? Or have they recently canceled treatment? Sometimes uh, the customer is completely dissatisfied with another company, so they'll call us and they'll transfer it to an inspector. And the reason they canceled with the other company is because the other company couldn't solve the problem. And, you know, sometimes customers cannot tell the full truth and they'll say, well, what kind of problem are you having? Oh, it's nothing. We just got a mouse. And in reality, this place is being eaten up with rodents and they've had mice for five years and the other company couldn't solve it. So you really have to really question these people. Not that they're just they're uh, dishonest as much as, you know, they just don't want to tell you all that stuff because they're afraid to bump the price up. Also, where are you seeing the mice? We'll get some reports that are taken over the phone. They'll say, uh, treat house for rodents. Uh, where? The technician needs to know this. Is it a crawl space? Is it a full basement? Uh, what are we dealing with when we get there? It matters. It helps solve the problem. Why do these problems exist? Because it's taken on the phone. And why is the phone such a problem? You would think, well, they, you know, talking to someone's just as easy on the phone as it is uh, at face to face. Well, it's not because our inspectors are taking call after call after call. And a lot of times they're in a mad frenzy to get through that call to get to the next one. I don't want to sound like they're complacent, but in reality, you're just not going to get enough information unless the inspectors are trained to concentrate on the questions we need to ask. And unfortunately, it's, it's a problem to the service tech because once the inspector passes it to service, out of, south, out of sight, out of mind. One of the things that really pisses off uh, Professor Chad and actually all the service managers is when we go to an account that we've actually been servicing for quite a while and the technician goes in and still investigating why the mice or the, the rats are still a problem, they do the biggest mistake in the world. And unfortunately, it's uh, all too prevalent with most companies and we're trying to stop it with our company, but it happens. Throw bait at it. If you've been out to that account two times, three times and they're still having rodent problems, throwing all the bait in the world at this problem will not solve it. Obviously they're not taking the bait or they'd be dying or the rodent pressure is so great and they're getting in somehow that all the bait in the world still won't solve it. So when you look at these warranty callbacks or let's say you're a citizen and you're a customer and you're getting all these callbacks and all they do is come out and replace the bait they're, they're wasting your time, they're throwing away company money, and it's irresponsible, it's unprofessional. That's not how we're supposed to do it. Doesn't solve the problem. It costs money. It, it, it costs the company money, but it costs the, it, the consumer money because they're wasting time with this. It costs confidence and loss of business. You can't solve a raw rodent problem you haven't put any effort into it other than to throw bait at it. Pretty soon the customer's going to cancel. And who could blame them? Lazy. That's one thing about it. This is a profession. This is a trade. When you become a test technician, I've already told you some of the faults with the inspection department. This is on you technicians. This is because you're too lazy to investigate the problem possibly and not find out what's really causing the problem. If the rodents aren't taking the bait, find out why. If they are taking the bait and it's still not working, find out why. We'll go over it. We're going to teach you this. You should know it. Not professional. 
I mean, if you go to a dentist and the dentist say every time you go there with whatever cleanings, oh, we got to pull a tooth, got to pull a tooth, got to pull a tooth. It's not really solving the problem because eventually you're going to run out of teeth. <laughs> so anyway, find out what the real problem is, solve the problem. It's a liability. Every time you put rodenticide on the ground or inside uh, a unit or a house, you're putting out something that could potentially harm a, a non-target pest or, or worse, a pet or a child. Why? Again, Chad, Professor Chad's dead on the money here. When the bait is not working, placing more bait as a solution is nuts. Why would people do that? I don't understand it. I think I just went over some of it. So if you're doing it, I can only assume you're lazy and unprofessional. Professor Chad states in commercial and residential, the big problem with rodents not taking the bait and they keep throwing bait at it, you're just adding to it, is bait competition. Consumers need to know this, and it should be explained by the inspector, and it should be explained by the technician when he goes out and he sees that the bait is not being taken. Find out why. And consumers, they know a lot because they have the internet. But to be honest with you, they're not researching this. They paid you to solve the problem. If a, if a rodent is not taking the bait, why would he not? Because he's got better things to eat. This is an example that Professor Chad and his crew took at a commercial site. Uh, <laughs> Do you realize that everything in those trash bags is a delicacy to a rat or to a mouse? You got bread, you got meat, you got everything they want. So you could put a bait station with our rodenticide right inside that little compound and they're still going to eat it. This situation needs to be addressed to the property manager in the commercial areas so that we can eliminate the bait competition. Otherwise, the bait ain't going to work. I mean, we're not going out there with 22s and shooting them. For God's sakes, the only weapon you got a lot of times is your bait and also your knowledge to tell them how to solve the problem, which we're going to go into the three elements of proper rodent control. Professor Ramon, this drives him crazy. He's a corporate manager in Maryland, he handles a part of DC on the residential side. He says on the residential side that it is just as bad with bait competition, but of a different quality. And he's going to say, well, what, what are you talking about? Well, rats don't eat the, the trash. Well, of course they do. But on the residential side, it's more compound. Rats will go to grass seed. They'll eat bird seed. And what do you find in these garages sometimes? Grass seed and bird seed. They love it. That's what they eat in the field. Before uh, house mouse became uh, house mouse, he was a field mouse and he ate seed. And that's what they're doing when they get in the garage. So if you're going to a unit that they're not taking the bait, Take a look around, see if they've got a bird feeder, see if they're feeding uh, uh, you know, uh, our grass. Oftentimes you're gonna find the bait competition, remove that and they'll take your bait. This is another issue, people have bird feeders. The first thing I look at used to when I was on a commercial property, we couldn't solve a problem. I'd walk around the units and let's see who's feeding the birds. You'd be surprised at how many bird feeders there are. And that attracts squirrels, it attracts everything. If you have a rodent problem, homeowners, get rid of the bird feeder for at least a while. Hey, look, we all love birds, but you're feeding rodents most of the time and not birds if you have a rodent problem. Dog food, pet food. You know, the ant, most consumers don't know this. I'm, some techs may not, but the antidote for the products we use for rodenticide is vitamin K1. That's in every dog food, pretty much, and all, also cat food. So when little Fido goes out there and does his business on the lawn, that vitamin K1 is in that feces. Rats and mice eat pet feces. So if they're not picking up their rodent, I mean, if they're not picking up their droppings, you're going to have pretty healthy mice because they can eat the heck out of the uh, toxic product we put down and be solved and being cured himself by eating poop. <laughs> it is what it is. Crazy business. That's how it is. Vitamin K1. Got to understand that. And it says right on our product. This comes off our product label. Uh, Anticoagulant uh, bromodilon is what we use. Uh, the antidote, give vitamin K1. Okay, well, we'll just feed everybody dog food. <laughs> Not really. But that is the problem when we have bait problems that they can be consuming the bait. It's not bait competition. They're actually eating our bait and curing themselves at the same time by eating dog poop. Okay. Well, I don't recommend it to go out and eat dog poop to get vitamin K1, but a rat and a mouse will. So, unfortunately, the phone jockeys, they don't tell people this stuff, and they, they really shouldn't go into that detail on it. 
but the technician should. You're not a phone jockey. You're face to face with people. You're out there. They're screaming at you because you couldn't solve the rodent problem. Well, take a look around. Why, why are they taking a the bait and still surviving, actually flourishing? Or why aren't they taking a the bait? That's your job, tech. Stop throwing a bait away. If, if it's not being used, if it's not being, find out the problem. And I'm going to show you how to do it. I've got a lot of good professors here. They may look funny, but they're pretty darn smart. And they're going to tell you how to do it. Now, here's another problem that Ramon just cannot stand. Professor Ramon says, most of the time, our people are just in a hurry. And all they want to do is get in and get out. We used to call it spray and pray. Well, in rodenticide, just put the bait down and leave. Oh, my God, this makes K-Dog, Professor K-Dog, really mad. I'm not sure what's up with his tongue, but I think he's blowing bubbles at us or whatever. But I can tell you right now, it really pisses him off. And it would me, too. You want to get in and get out. Put the bait down. We got a rodent problem here. You know, y'all been here twice and had not solved it. Well, we'll throw some more bait at it. It really drives him crazy. I don't blame him. You guys are cheating when you do that. You're stealing from the customer and you're stealing from the homeowner. And if we catch you doing it and you don't solve the problem, you're just throwing bait at it, there'll be some retraining or worse. Trust me. Oh, on commercial, Chad just won't look at it. Professor Chad will not look at a bad job like this. He will get rid of that technician on commercial side in a heartbeat. You can't do this. You can't just go out there and throw bait in and out and cost us a big commercial account. Not happening. Professor Chad will gouge his eyes out or yours. Now, Ramon, he's learned this from me from a long time ago. This is something that really drives him crazy. And, well, it's got Professor Bobby just chewing his fingernails completely off. So, and that's because our products are based on science, not magic. When we go out and treat a property, all, it sounds silly, but people think as soon as you put that treatment down, boom, all the rodents in the world are gone. No, they have to. There's a reason why it takes a little while for the rodent to die. They say it's a, uh, a one feeding product. No, it takes a while for them to ingest enough to expire. And then they have to get used to it. You know, rodents are neophobic. They don't like anything new. Once they get used to the station, they'll be in the track to it. So phone jockeys, you need to tell them, listen, it's gonna take a little bit to get this under control. You just tell them the truth and it will. Phone jockey ain't got no time for that. Well, you better have time for it or you're gonna wind up with canceled quarters and any complaint about that. Set the expectations. Tell them, listen, we're going to come out based on what you've told me. This is the problem. Our technician is going to evaluate. We're going to set the uh, bait out. And without any problems, uh, such as do you have bird feeders or you got grass seed, ask them these things. And tell them, so look, it's going to take a while for the bait to start take effect. Then if it's still a problem, let's say in three or four weeks, or three weeks minimum, give us a call. Don't be a cheater, dude. Don't go out there and just throw bait at it and set the expectations. The reason I said cheater is because if you're going out on rodent calls as a technician and not setting the expectation, not educating the consumer, just throwing bait at it, you're cheating. You're cheating the customer and you're cheating the company. And eventually you'll cheat yourself right out of a job. Now, old Professor Russ Russ here, he's seen just about everything. But some things still amaze me. This is one thing that Professor k Dog. I see why he got his tongue out now, his teeth getting kind of big on me. But anyway, this is I have preached since I've been in the industry. There are three parts to solving any pest problem or any rodent problem. The first one is culture. Cultural means how we live. It doesn't mean it's a, a bad thing. It's, it means that if, if, if someone has a habit of leaving their trash out and not properly disposing of it, that's a cultural problem. If someone doesn't clean the stoves up, if they don't get the grease out from under the, uh, uh, near the refrigerator or between the stove and refrigerator, that's gonna be a roach problem. It's gonna be a rodent problem. Those are cultural problems. And as a pest professional, you need to educate these consumers on these problems. You need to tell them, hey, you, need, you gotta clean this up. And if you don't tell them, and all you do is throw bait at it, they're gonna look at it as you're not solving the problem. Bait alone will not solve the problem. Treatment alone will not solve the problem. There, are, It is a relationship, a professional uh, relationship between consumer and pest control company to work together to solve a problem. As, as I said, it's not magic. All of us have to work together. You have to find out what the cultural issue is in the particular residence you're treating before you can solve a problem just by throwing bait or pesticide at it. The second one, 
Ramon is a happy Cowboy fan. Professor Ramon is the biggest Cowboy fan I know. Even though he's from New York, he is a traitor. He has taken on the Cowboy attitude. But Professor Ramon will tell you, you can clean up the cultural inside. You can make sure that the bait is placed. But it, the mechanical means if there are openings where these pests or rodents can get in, and there's a high pest pressure in that area, they're going to continue to come in the unit or come in the uh, residence. All you will do is harvest them. You'll kill them as they come in with the bait because they're, they're taking it now. But they're just coming and dying, coming and dying, and constantly have a, pretty soon the population will outnumber the, uh, the, the cure that we have. So you got to make sure that everything's caulked up, everything's screened up. you got to make sure that the pipe chases are taken care of. Cultural and mechanical. And lastly, but not least, is chemical. That is the last consideration. When people have rodent problems, sure, we'll put the chemical out, which is bait, or whatever else we need to do. But we have to address the mechanical and the cultural problems, especially on warranties. When we go out because the consumer is saying our product's not working, it does work. But are there mechanical or cultural issues that are affecting our treatment process and if you don't explain it and if you don't examine it and if you don't research it you'll get a bad review you'll lose a customer and eventually you're going to lose business i'm not sure what's up with professor bobby's eyes but i'm liking that cheeseburger hat i gotta tell you that cheeseburger hat i don't know where he got it but i want one and he'll tell you right now that his biggest complaints from areas that he works because he does a lot of commercial in dc and baltimore are us not respecting the mechanical and the cultural problems. Throw all the bait you want to at it. Even wear a cheeseburger hat. I don't care. But you have to address all three, not just one. Well, it just makes Chad sick because he's not going to lose a big commercial account because his technicians. And the commercial technician in, on the Virginia side, they're strictly commercial. So if they've neglected any one of those three, Chad's not going to let you work for him. He's going to get Professor Chad. He's got that tongue disease too it looks like <laughs> but I'm not sure he's going to put up with it I can tell you that so this is what drives Professor K Dog and that is his pet dog beside him crazy as well it makes Professor Chad literally nuts and I can't get Bobby from stopping to eat his fingernails and actually it just makes Ramon cry I even put a happy hat on him and he's still crying but this is the problem that drives us all crazy it's the number one problem and that's documentation. If you have a, uh, uh, an account that is issuing a complaint because we can't solve a particular pest or rodent problem, the technician may say, well, it's a filthy place. It's this. It's not this. We look at the service ticket and the service ticket says nothing. Technicians, when you go to a unit and you're struggling to solve a problem and there is cultural or mechanical problems there, you have to list it in your notes. That is what that note thing is for, fellas and ladies. You have to put that in there. So if we go to an account and go, well, Miss Property Manager, we've been out here 10 times to solve this problem. And in 10 times, we have listed problems, or Mr. Homeowner, that you have not addressed. It's right there on your service ticket. Clean the kitchen up. Take the trash out. Clean the poop out of the backyard. These aren't excuses. They're actual problems that are hindering our service. Now, if they do all that and you still can't solve it, we got to get a manager involved, and that's what it's for. I got the three strike rule. You go out three times to an account within the same quarter, you need to get a manager involved. This is genius. Professor Chad had uh, the brainiac here, Mr. Frank Bowers, uh, put together this on our tablet. And what it does when he addresses any commercial unit, the technician does, this is a service summary sheet. It tells on every single unit what he did and noted it. This is what's critical because commercial sometimes are they some really nice ones out there and there's some really not too nice ones out there, but we service them all. So if you got one that's got a, a bad rotor problem and we're getting blamed for not performing proper service, well, let's look at the, uh, the sun machine on every time he does a service. Whoa, all of a sudden I look on that particular unit, grease on above the stove, need to be cleaned, very dirty conditions. No live activity, kitchen not prepared for service. Same way, in each one of these are units that he has listed, if you look to the right, uh, that he's listed on it, it tells what we've done. It complete history. But if we don't have documentation, we go out there blind, going to lose an account, <laughs> we're going to lose a, a, a confidence, uh, they're going to lose confidence in us, and uh, bad reviews are going to be ridiculous. So documentation is critical. You have to do it. 
if we find that a technician is not documenting these summary sheets, they're not going to work for us long. It is mandatory that they use the summary sheets on every commercial account, and I want notes done on residential service tickets. Now, I guess that's all, folks, because I'll tell you something. These guys may look funny, but they're the best in the business. Me, I am as old as dirt, but I can tell you right now, we've seen it all, and I check every service ticket, and I check every inspection. We try to do the best we can, but it's up to you people in the field, inspectors and technicians, to make sure that our quality is up to par. Mr. Roden here may not like it, but he ain't going to last long as long as we do it right. So be prepared for your exam. I want everything taken care of and all uh, scores passed. Thanks for listening. I don't know if Professor Russ and the crew will be back, but we'll have some more training next month.